Income tax 2021-2022 software example. Earned income tax credit, the EIC with three qualifying children. Get ready to get refunds to the max. Diving into income tax 2021-2022. We'll assert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but you might want to have access to the forms and schedules, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov, starting point, single filer, Adam Smith, living in Beverly Hills, 90210. We've got the three dependents, which will all be qualifying children for the calculation of the earned income tax credit, which is our focus here in prior presentations. We talked about having no qualifying children, then one, then two. Now we're at three and above because if you go on above three, you're not getting any more benefit with regards to the calculation of the earned income tax credit as we will see here. We're then starting with the income level at the 19,549 unusual number. We'll explain it shortly. We then have the 12,550 for the standard deduction, the taxable income at the 6,999, the tax calculated then on page two, six, on line 16, 698. And then we're focused down here on the earned income tax credit, which is currently maxed out at the 6728 6728 we also have the refundable child tax credit these things kind of get commingled together because they're both refundable credits and they are dependent in part upon the dependents and the qualifying children for the respective credits we can see the fact that this is a refundable credit because we only have tax owed of the 698 and we don't have any payments that we put in place here and we're getting this big refund back, which really isn't a refund in this case because uh, it's not reflecting a refund of an overpayment, but rather a kind of a benefit type of program. That's kind of what it means to be a refundable type of credit. These two being the biggest two, our focus here focusing on the earned income side of things. So the first thing that people often ask is, is going to be, well, do I, do I qualify for the credit? And you often can look at tables to see where the maximum income levels are for three or more down below here. So if your income goes above 51,464 for non-married, 57,414 for married, you lose the credit. But we also want to know where the credit is maximized at. And this is the maximum credit for any, any number of, of qualifying children because three is the maximum that gives you any benefit. So if you have less than that for qualifying children, then the maximum amount you can have per qualifying children would be lower than that. If you have four children, as we'll see, the credit will not be going up above that. So the maximum amount of the credit is the 6,728. Now, as you can see, we have then the income at the upper threshold of the 19,549 here. You could find these thresholds on the instructions to the form 1040, looking up the earned income tax credit tables. And we're down here uh, at the end. So we're with three or more and for the, for the single or non-married and we're up to the upper threshold, not for, for the non-married, the upper threshold was the 19,550 to get to that maximum amount. So that's the upper threshold of the income level. The lower threshold, we can go all the way down without decreasing the credit to the 14,950. So if I went down, for example, to the 14,950, 14,950, and then I go back to my calculation, page two, then we, we're still at that maximum amount here. What if I add another dependent, another qualifying child? Shouldn't have an impact. Let's test it out. Let's say I add another dependent and we have four. We have four dependents now. We're gonna say another dependent has been added. And so now we've got four on the books, but it caps out at three. They're all qualifying. And so they should be, hopefully I have that correctly calculated and it still caps it out at three here. And so, so three or more is the cap on that. So then I'm going to go back on over. If I change my income to the lower threshold, which we did, if I go below that, then my credit starts going down. So if I bring it down to 10,000, for example, then the credit goes down. If I bring it down to 7,000 for the wages, then the credit goes down. If I bring it down to 5,000 on the wages, the credit goes down. If I bring it down to 2,000 on the wages, the credit goes down. And if I go down to like, 
like a hundred dollars on the wages then the credit is going down if i bring it back up to the maximum amount the income level at the 14,950. So I'm going to say, what if I bring it back up to the 14,14950? Oh, 14,9950. Oh, bringing it back up. Then we're at that maximum again. 6,728. Uh, I flatten out at that maximum. I could stay at the maximum all the way up if single to getting up to the 19,549. So I can bring it up to the 1919 five four nine and we're still at the max if i go one dollar above that 19.5 then we're we've we've gone back down actually no i'm still i'm still there hold on a second we've got we've got page two the the six seven let me check it out again we're at oh i'm sorry it's the 19.550 then it starts to go back down and then if i start going up above that let's say 25,000 then it starts to go back down so we've gone past the threshold 30,000 then it's going back down if i go to 35,000 35,000 then it's going down if i bring it up to 40,000 40,000 then it's going down if I bring it up to 45,000, then the credit is going down. If I bring it up to 50,000, then it's getting quite low. And if I bring it up past 51.5 about, then the credit has been, has been removed. Okay, so now let's imagine that, uh, that we had uh, a low income that was below the threshold of like that 5,000. And so that would be a lower, a lower amount here, but we had 2019 income. So now my income is only 5,000. I'm not maximizing out the credit. I need more earned income. I can look then to 2019, not 2020, but back to 2019, possibly making an election if that year was greater. So I can go back on over. Let's do that again. 2019 I can say let's make the election to use 2019 income and say this was let's say here it was at the the 19,000 of income in 2019 so now I could go back on over and I'm back up to the max because I'm using 2019 income even though in 2021 I only had 5,000 which would be a lower amount so you could test out 2019 income Let's remove that, the, and that brings us back then to where we were before. And the other thing is that combat pay that could come into play. So we might have someone working in the military where they get paid combat pay. That then, let's say this was combat pay, would be on box uh, 12 with a Q in it, and it wouldn't have any money in box one. Let's say that was the 9,000. Then if I go back to the, to the first page, that that 9,000 isn't being included in income. That's the benefit of combat pay. We're not gonna charge taxes on it is the general idea, but it's, it's not being included for the earned income tax credit. It would be beneficial to include it for this calculation. So if I was to say, could you please include that combat pay for the EIC calculation, then we get a higher amount here because the combat pay is now being included even though we're not being taxed still on the combat pay. So you can kind of get the best of both worlds in that event with the combat pay. Okay, let's bring it back. Let's take the combat pay out. Let's bring it, bring it back up to that maximum amount, which was the 19,549. So 19,549. And so that is going to be our maximum credit amount here and then we're going to imagine getting married now so now if you got if you got married you can imagine a situation of getting married to someone who has no qualifying children it doesn't really matter uh how many qualifying children the other person has because uh because you can't get any more benefit whether single or married past three as we saw so we already have four here if we only had three qualifying children and we got married to someone who has zero then it would still be at the three, if they had one, it would still be at three. So it doesn't really matter how many qualifying children at this point for 
Adam with regards to the earned income tax credit if they if they married uh, someone else, which is kind of interesting because you can imagine uh, two people who basically are maximizing out their credit. Let's say you had two people that both had three or more qualifying children, and let's pull out the trustee calculator. Calculator. Let's do some calculations, and let's say that they were maxing out the credit at the six seven two eight, and they were both single times two, you would think they would both be getting a benefit then between the two of them of the 13,456, which is pretty significant. And then if they got if they got married, then you'd have double the income. And again, you wouldn't get any more benefit other than the three, the three qualifying children. So let's say they got married then and say now we've got married people. And then the income is going to be for between the two of them, let's say it was 19,549. So they're both on the upper threshold to, to max out the credit at single. And then, so now we're at the 3998 uh, and the credit is at the 3,862, which is, you know, significantly, could be significantly different than if they, you know, significantly lower possibly than if they, if they both filed kind of single. And obviously if you got married to, to someone that earns something that would take us over the threshold, the threshold being 57,000. So if they made, if they made like 30,000 or let's say uh, 35,000, let's say uh, 38,000, then we'd basically, that would be at the 57,540. Then you would have someone that would be, that would be taking us over the threshold and we wouldn't get any a benefit in that case. So it's just something to keep in mind because that, you know, <laughs> that could be a significant, that could be a significant uh, change. Okay, so now let's just take a look at the income levels. So if I look at the married couple and say they're married, where could we maximize out the credit if married? Well, the upper threshold if married to max out the credit uh, is down here at the 25, 25, 499, I believe. So if it was 25, 499, we could go, okay, income 25, 499, going back on over. So there is our, our income for three or more, maximizing out, because three is the max, and we're at the maximum of the 6728. We could go as low as with the income can go as low as as we've seen the 14950 so i can go all the way down to the 14950 141950 and we still have then the maximum credit if i go below that then the credit starts going down so if i bring if i bring this down to 10000 then the credit starts going down if i bring this down to 7000 then the credit starts going down if I bring this down to 4,000, then that's 40,000. That's different. That's like an extra zero. Then the credit goes down. If I bring this down to 2,000, the credit goes down. If I bring it down to something to like zero, the credit goes down to zero. Let's maximize it back up again. If I go back up to the max, it's got to be at the 14,950. So I'm going to go back. Okay, 14. 950 that's the low end of the threshold to max out the credit and then again it goes as high as i could go as high as where it stays at that flat area to the 25 uh 25 499 25 25 499 there i'm still at the max if i go one dollar more 25 500 then it starts to go back down. And then if I keep going up to 30,000, 30,000, then it's going down. If I go up to 35,000, then the credit's going down. If I go up to 40,000, then the credit's going down. If I go to 45,000, then the credit's going down. If I go to 50,000, then the credit's going down. If I go, let's do this two more times, 55,000, then the credit's getting pretty small. And if I go above 
the 57,420 about, then the credit has disappeared entirely. So that's a general idea of like kind of the curve you can keep in, in mind.